I'm filming my May wrap up in July. So you may be able to tell from the title, but in this video today, I want to talk about my May wrap up. Now in May, I participated in the Medieval Fun that is hosted by Holly Hearts Books here on YouTube. Links will be provided down below. And surprisingly, I didn't bomb at it, which is surprising considering how well I did in the Owls for the Magical Fun. So, yes, I read a total of, I believe, seven books in the month of May and I'd like to show them to you. So, towards the end of April, I was getting really annoyed with my whole magical -thon TBR that I decided to nix that idea and start a new series, start reading something that I had already read before. And that, my friends, was King Arthur and Her Knights of the Round Table by K.M. Shea. This bind up is of books one, two, and three. I've read all three of these before, so I was really happy to read this again. It is just as enjoyable as it was back in 2013 or so when I first read it. And I was experimenting more with tabbing up the books. More tabs than the last book I tabbed, but not many. There were a few blue marks, mostly uh, character descriptions. There were these cute scenes that I loved between the main character and different characters that I put in pink. And then there was one part where I was disturbed in some level or angry or given a red alert. And that's what the orange tab is for. So I was going to do a full review on this whole series, but I think I can wrap up my thoughts about it really succinctly in this video. So I'm not going to worry about that. So this story follows Britt Arthurs. She is an American young adult who is traveling abroad with some friends, visiting places in England and Europe, and they come across this graveyard in London where there is a sword in an anvil or a stone and all her friends are laughing having a good time taking pictures with the sword while Brit walks up to the sword there is a big magnificent shine and whatever and Brit is teleported to medieval times where she meets Merlin and Sir Ector and Sir Kay King Arthur's adoptive father and brother respectively and in this story, we find out that Arthur has run off with a shepherdess. He no longer wants his destiny. He's no longer up to the task of being king. And Merlin casts a spell on the sword so that anyone who pulls the sword or is able to pull out the sword will be teleported back in time. And they, anyone who is capable of pulling out the sword is then capable of being a leader to Britain. And that's where this starts. It was really interesting because it, it was fun to read a modern woman's perspective on the events of Arthurian history. The battles that Arthur wages against King Maligant and his allies. I think for the entirety of this book, Brit is all thinking that this has to be a dream, eventually I'll wake up, perhaps it's a coma. And then after all the battles she has won in that war, she finally is told by Merlin that I cannot send you back. This is not a dream. This is your new path. <laughs> Suddenly she's kind of concerned that she was able to risk her life thinking that if she dies, she wakes up. And, and this series just blew me away. I loved it. This bind up of the three books in particular, I rated five stars, which that's kind of common for the rest of the series. Loved it, so glad I read it, and it got me more into reading again. So this was the first book I finished in May, but technically it wasn't part of the medieval -thon because I finished it on May 2nd and I didn't even realize that medieval -thon was a thing until May 3rd or 4th. Now, before I continue, I was having difficulty reading another book, so I put that down because I just wanted to continue on with the series. And that is what I did. I read the bind up of the fourth, fifth, and sixth books, and as you can see, there is quite a little bit more tabs in here. I finally kind of got the gist of it, got rolling with it. Um, it also helped that I think these are my favorite books in the series, my favorite stories. Just more silly stuff. Brit finally comes to terms with the fact that she will never go home, that she is living a life as king, and that she's lying to everyone she knows. Lancelot comes in. I forget if it, if he comes in in the first bind up or in this bind up, but he's no fool. He kind of sees things. He's trying to be very manipulative. He's trying to win the heart of the king, but 
she sees right through him he's nothing but a joke and she knows the history of Arthur Lancelot and Guinevere so she automatically does not trust him and that makes him just strive harder and makes him go behind her back sometimes. Oh, 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 oh. And the best part in this entire series is Brit's relationship with the Lady of the Lake and Morgos, who's Arthur's cousin and Mor Morgan Le Fay. They all are hilarious and they form this sort of book club, not really book club, more like a I hate Lancelot club and they talk and they jest and I think at one point Brit asks if the Lady of the Lake could curse Lancelot. Um, it's just that's a hilarious aspect I totally forgot about. It. I'm sorry I'm so bad at giving synopses for these things but I read these books back to back to back and it, the story is all blending together. I'm remembering things that I didn't remember now. But anyways, it, it's crazy. I highly recommend it again. Also, you guys, if anyone sees this and wants to read the series because Arthurian legend retelling modern girl in medieval times, hell yeah, girl being king, Arthur, not really. She's called Arthur, but anyway, this series, you guys are so lucky if you want to read this after seeing this video because back when the books were being published, they were being published as individual novellas and you'd have to wait months, if not a year, for each novella to come out. And the end of this bind up in particular, the novella that ends this bind up, was a cliffhanger if I ever knew a cliffhanger, was heart-wrenching, beautiful, and then you dreaded the last book. Basically, there's a new player, Vivian. Automatically, there's a sense of dread, and automatically you know that Vivian is not someone you want to fool around with, not someone you want to ally yourself with. And Merlin, at the end of this, in order to protect Brit, decides that he's going to pretend to fall in love with Vivian, because Vivian is trying to cast a spell on Brit and Merlin to get them to fall in love with her. Brit is obviously immune, being a woman. Merlin easily defends himself against it, but in order to make sure Vivian is not hostile towards Camelot, he decides that he's going to let her think that he's falling for her. And at the end of this, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. He leaves Brit in order to be with Vivian and fool her. And it's, I loved this so much. Read it. Five out of five stars, duh. And this was the first book that I read for the Medieval Athon. It counted towards the prompt of read a book with a sword on the cover. Because you see, sword, 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 and she is holding a sword. So, yes, I went from being a prisoner to being a squire with a sword in her birthday suit. Because I didn't have any clothes yet, <laughs> but I was happy. Because this was this was incredible. I loved it so much. Now, while I was reading this on the side, reading this at home before I go to bed, um, I did want to be reading while I was at work or while I was having to do things around the house or when I was out for a drive or something. So while I was reading that, I was also reading, listening to an audio book of Anna Justin Blood. I gave this book three out of five stars. I think at one point I was playing Sims 4 while listening to this and that is not something I recommend just because I was paying more attention to the story and the Sims in Sims 4 than I was paying attention to the story of the audiobook so I don't recommend that however I did get a good half an hour while I was walking around the neighborhood exercising and that was a good use of my time I think that particular part of the book I enjoyed the most oddly enough it was around the time when Anna and the main character whose name I am forgetting uh, they kind of connected and she was no longer a bloodthirsty hostile maniac so that was cool. For the life of me I can't remember what happened mostly. I do know something about our main character. He was actually being haunted by the monster that killed his father but then at the end of the book Anna was able to help him Am I missing something? I'm really bad at remembering these books apparently, but what do you expect? I'm filming this in July and this is my May update. Oh, that was actually fulfilling the prompt of read a book in a duology and in reading that book I got myself to daggers. So after the second book I was still naked with a sword and two daggers, but in the third book I finally had clothing. So after reading Anna I keep wanting to say Anna and the French Kiss, but no. 
after I finished listening slash reading Anna Dressed in Blood, I wanted to finish the rest of the King Arthur and Her Knights series. So uh, I decided to get the ball rolling. <laughs> now I was pleasantly surprised that the seventh and final book of this series was not a bind up of novellas, but one actual full length novel. And it was very enjoyable. This was the first book that I read in the series that I had not previously read. So yeah, I was I was waiting for this because like I said, the last bind up had that cliffhanger that I that destroyed me and I waited this long to read endings, which is what it's called, it's called endings. I was really excited to get to this. I could not be bothered to tab. I think I gave it two tabs. One, I don't even know what the yellow tab is anymore. And one, something I loved so much. This was a perfect conclusion to the series. I don't want to give anything away, but turns out the future is not lost and merlin -y. Oh, Merlin. I will forever be a stan of Merlin, whether it be Colin Morgan Merlin or the Merlin in this series or Elliot Knight's Merlin in Once Upon a Time. Rest in peace. I will always love Merlin and this was no exception. Five out of five stars, just like the other two books. As soon as I finished this, I wanted to reread the series again. I wanted to start again. I wanted to open the first bind up and just read it again, read it again and again and again. And hands down, this series is my number one favorite series. And I don't think anything's gonna be moving it out of that spot. Five out of five stars. This was the third book I read for the Medieval Thon. This book I counted towards the read a book with a shiny cover, cause it is shiny. And that outfit looked like this. I got confused and I thought it was the armor. No, it's this dress with little armor bits right there. So yes. And the fourth book I read for the medieval Athon was Fairest of All. This was a tale about the Disney evil queen from Snow White, kind of her life after marrying Snow White's father, becoming queen, um, but then kind of the degradation, the downfall towards being the evil queen that we know. And then there's a little bit that takes place during the events of Snow White, but we do get more of the Queen's perspective. I thought this was really interesting. I read this for the prompt of read a book with a friend or buddy read a book. I chose to read this with my friend Ashley. I don't even think she actually got around to reading it, but I was texting her a whole heck of a lot, um, probably annoying her to death. So I counted that towards my read a book with a buddy, even though it probably doesn't, but yes. Then, because I fulfilled that prompt, I was able to have a dog. So I had a sword, two daggers, one outfit, and a dog. I was very happy. And then after that, I went back to a book that I had initially started reading after having read the first bind up of the King Arthur and Her Knights series, and that was Damsel. This was an Arthurian retelling that featured a Lady of the Lake. I don't believe it was like the Lady of the Lake, the one that was all-encompassing, all-powerful, but Damsel, the Lady of the Lake that is featured as the main protagonist in this book, she is the one that forges Excalibur, that makes the scabbard. As long as Arthur wears the scabbard on his belt, he cannot bleed out. Um, he can be wounded, but if he's wearing the scabbard, it doesn't bleed, and so there's more of a chance of him getting healed. Other than that, I don't remember. This book was really dull, especially after having read the first book in the King Arthur and Her Knight series, so I had to put it down. This was the second book I picked up, but I did end up putting it down. You may notice that I don't actually have the book with me, even though I had the book in my medieval Fawn TBR video, and that's because I have already sold it to a used bookstore. I really didn't enjoy it, and as much as it pains me to get rid of an Arthurian retelling book, I did not see myself rereading it ever, revisiting it. I didn't see it as something I liked a lot and wanted on my shelves, so I did get rid of it. Hopefully someone enjoys it much better, and thankfully I didn't spend much money on it because I bought it a while ago on Book Outlet. And yeah, reading that book, uh, it got me a second outfit, one that I wanted initially and I like really wanted this outfit, was the outfit you get 
for reading a book with your favorite color on the spine and that was this outfit so yes I'm happy I read it because I really did want to get that outfit but I'm glad the book is out of here and I also gave it three stars as well side note real quick how would you like to see the picture I drew of myself in my medieval thon get up you can actually have a look at it on Instagram I'll post a link to my Instagram below as well the next book I read was a very 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 short novella called Return to Bryn Merwin and that is by Jennifer Selzer interesting premise I wish we had gotten more of a story or a longer story because it was in modern day it was about this man who was actually a uh, dragon and he was returning to his homeland so he could rest because long ago he fought in some battles lost the love of his life that's an airplane if you can hear that um, he lost the love of his life hello Gracie and things happen we see him now in future days taking an airplane because magic's gone to his homeland where he can die and finally let go because for the most part they are immortal um, except for some other circumstances my memory is shot today and I am terribly sorry I did love the premise humans that are also dragons and they were older than they seem I liked that but the story was so 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 short I feel like it was barely 15 pages I honestly didn't even give this a rating it was just so short and I didn't want to bring the Goodreads rating any lower I didn't read it but I did review it kind of forgettable it felt more like a preview to a longer full-length novel than a short story missing a lot of information and hard to care about the character even if at a glance you can tell he's haunted so yeah he's haunted by like the love of his life who's dead um, but yeah I just wish we had gotten more of it read that I almost didn't want to count it towards the medieval thong but I did anyway but there's a dragon on the cover which gave me another outfit which was this armor I just wanted the one outfit but I got three now okay <laughs> oh yeah and then after reading that I took on a behemoth not really behemoth but it's bigger than what I've been reading uh, and that is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare this is the first book in the Dark Artifice series. I believe the Dark Artifice series was the third series she created because the first series she made was The Mortal Instruments. I've read all of that. Then The Infernal Devices. I read one book of that. And then this new series, The Dark Artifices. Honestly, before reading this, I thought I had been done with Cassandra Clare. I finished The Mortal Instruments. I hated Clockwork Angel, but Pierre Ford here on YouTube she read the entirety of Cassandra Clare and she was bolstering up the Shadowhunters world and she was talking about how much she cares for the Blackthorn children and I wanted to know what the hype was about what can I say and my library had both the ebook and the audiobook available at the time after I finished that teeny tiny thing so I grabbed it and I read it in less than 10 days and I'm just what I think I liked it there were twists and turns and literal plot twists that I didn't see coming and I didn't think I cared but I did care I see kind of what the hype is about I'm not quite at that level but I am interested in reading Lord of Shadows just not now because I'm kind of in a slump but yes it was good I like the cover will I buy the series no probably not because read it once I'm done I think I gave that one four out of five stars Ooh, we're doing something different because I've had five out of five stars no stars because I didn't rate it and three stars but now I have a four star yay and that my friends closed out my reading experience in the medieval thon not too shabby I don't think Lady Midnight counted towards any of the prompts though I'll have to look back and check but I don't think so and with that I read five six seven books so with Lady Midnight I was an empress I was really only aiming for night hoping that I could get to princess but empress that was pretty cool so what's the deal man April I read two books May I read seven what is wrong with my brain and you know how many books I read in June 
one. I don't understand. I go through lows where I read barely anything. It's a huge amount of effort to read. Then, oh, this medievalathon comes another month and I've read seven. But yes, those are the books that I read in the month of May. Hello from the future. This is editing Jesse realizing I never signed off of my video. So I'd like to say have a great morning, a great evening, or a great afternoon, whenever, wherever you're watching this. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.